worst things I've ever seen done in my life to a, a, a general. I've never seen anything like it but done by these yellow-bellied slime. What did Flynn do? He lied to them? They set him up to lie. They could indict a ham sandwich, as Schumer famously said. They set him up to fail. They just wanted to nail someone to a cross. That's what they did. Of course he should be, he should be uh, <clears throat> pardoned. Absolutely. Pardon me, but Flynn should be pardoned. That's all. What else is in the news? Lots of stuff. But uh, what do you want to talk about? ABC, Ray, uh, late great days of the Savage Nation. What's on your mind, Ray, from New York City? Well, how are you today? If you don't know by now, you're never going to know. <laughs> well, thank you for having me on. And a uh, happy holiday season to you and your listeners. And I'm going to say Merry Christmas. I'll say it. Merry Christmas, everyone. I like to tell people if there wasn't a Christmas, there wouldn't be a holiday. But let's talk about the economy. If there wasn't a Christmas, there wouldn't be an America. Yeah, probably not. But, okay, about the stock market and the financial arm again, I'm here to tell you that everyone should take a breath and relax. Yeah, we're going to go through some hard times. Uh, the equity markets are going to have a difficult time for a while. More importantly, the credit markets are going to have it even worse. But in the end, it's going to get rid of the excesses of the last 25 years, and that will set us on a better path in the future. And the reason now, is that hold, now this is, okay, I know that attitude. It's like, okay, tighten your belts, kids, because here comes the jump, right? Yeah, more or less, but the good thing is that we're going to get rid of the bad things that cause us to get into the problems to begin with. We're gonna, like, what are the, give me some bad things. Some of the bad things. We're going to reverse our trade policy so we don't give away a trillion dollars of capital every year, and we'll have that capital to invest within America. We're going to stop the, the, the immigration. Wait, wait, let me answer to that for a minute, because some of the people are saying that the tariffs themselves, which are triggering a trade war, are responsible in part for the jitters in the stock market. How would you answer that? Well, that, that is true because the stock market and the financial economy is based on the idea in the last 25 years that shareholder value is more important than rewarding the workers that make the, the profits. But capitalism depends on a growing group of consumers marginally uh, enjoying greater wages so that they can buy more goods and that creates even greater production. So, I think so, bu so buying all the crap that we buy is what keeps the economy going? Well, that's what, that's what capitalism is all about. So am I, am I a communist if I don't go shop and buy stuff for Christmas? Does that make me a socialist or a commie? Then you become a saver who provides the capital. For I do. I'm one of the people who does not go to the parking lots that are jammed right now with people buying stuff they don't want and no one wants that they're going to mail to people who don't want it and send it back because I don't like this stuff. I don't need it. Uh, so I'm actually anti-American in that regard, I would think. The important thing is you have the capital if you want it to spend it. And that's the, that that's what makes capitalism work. People working and saving and spending at a progressively great... But I understand a lot of people don't save at all. There's no savings accounts. People are living on on, uh, on credit, on their credit cards. Well, they have to because the greater proportion of profits go to shareholders instead of workers. And so people live with, with a paycheck by paycheck, and that's what's got to change. That's what was different before the 1990s. People's now, now, Ray, what business are you in? Are you in the stock market? I, I invest my own money for myself as a private investor. You do? So you're very aware of market volatility? Of course. I have my own life uh, on the line every day. So I have to take these kinds of precautions that you're talking about. Okay, so we see a stock market that's going down, 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 down to 500 by now. What do you think is going to happen? It's probably going to go back down to 18,000 where it was before Trump got elected because... Any bang for your buck you're going to get out of the Trump election you've already gotten. The next mm. Trump's... Whoa, whoa, that's a big statement, Bray. The deal. We were at 13,000 five years ago. We were at 6,600 ten years ago. It's not the end of the world. But the good thing is that credit markets are going to become... We're going to bring financial discipline to politicians. And that's going to force... A, that's going to force a new attitude in Washington because they won't have the money to... Tomorrow, they have these trillion-dollar budget deficits. And so they... Well, you know, you touch on a raw nerve here, because although um, I think Trump's doing a great job, I don't like the running up of the debt, do you? Absolutely not. We're, we're mortgaging our future. We're leaving $75,000 of debt. Well, why is the Trump administration running up such a debt equal to, if not exceeding that of Obama? Didn't we vote for fiscal conservatism? 
because politicians have given the credit to do so will consistently bankrupt the national treasury to buy votes for re-election. the greatest person I know. Whoa, are you clear? Me and Darth I, I want to do a podcast. I, I know, know what you guys can get this gentleman's phone room. number. You see, like Mr. Romilly, they've podcast. accepted like you already. They, uh, they love to make great. their little jokes. Yeah, I'd love it. You're <laughs> the greatest, Michael. I'd love to have, be able to share. You, know, you see, this is what I'm talking about. A caller like you calling in once a week with a market opinion would be such a, a good thing to do like every week on a Thursday or something you know then I'm going to get a, an expert on nutrition an expert on dogs something like that it's not just going to be me it's going to be others and uh, that is good would you, would you be willing to be a contributor to the Savage Podcast? Oh my pleasure I, I, I was doing that on, on a New York minute and you know what's uh-huh. so you live in Manhattan or where? I live in Long Island <laughs> Long Island. You gotta say it properly, Long Island. You lost your accent over the years. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> That's from dealing with out of town. As you're trying to sound like you're an American, I know. Well, you know, I, I travel a lot, so I have to speak different languages, different <laughs> accents. You know. I want to ask you. I, mean, I know regional accents. You put them on. Oh. You change it according to where you go. I got the of course you do. You want to be you want to be accepted where you are. Oh you my goodness! I, I bet a lot of New Yorkers do that. I try to speak French in France. No, wreck this town. Do you speak French? I don't know. I know a half dozen words, but they like me because they try. Yeah, I know a half a dozen French words, but I speak them in perfect Parisian. And they think I'm an expert in French. Exactly, and that's how they like you. And if you got two zirkins, I'm a kid and I remember from my high school grammar. I learned a few things. Il y a deux zirkins, I'm a kid Oh, wow, perfect accent. Yeah, I'm from Paris, right? Where the end is there? Right, that's what I said. I remember when I went there when I was before I was married. I learned one phrase from the grammar book. It was from the bicycle thing, where the uh, the tire had a blowout, and the guy goes into a a shop to get the bicycle tire repaired. And the guy says, no, it's a matter of, simp- of a simple repair. And I used that when I went to France when I was 18 years old, when I would meet a girl I wanted to talk to, I'd say, she'd say one thing, I'd say another, and I'd say, it's a matter of a simple repair. And they always laughed. They got the joke. Even though it was about a bicycle tire, I thought it was funny. Well, that's how, yeah, that's how humans work, you know? They like to relate to each other. It builds trust and friendship. I don't even know how to say it's a matter of a simple repair anymore because it's not so simple anymore. <laughs> All right, Jim, don't let this guy go. We're sending him. Uh, we're sending him the greatest book of the century. Stop mass hysteria! What a great caller! And that brings us up to an important time in the Savage Nation, which is Jim is going to get that gentleman's phone number. He's going to become on a caller on the Savage Nation. You know what I want to do? Maybe today and the rest of the week. Are you ready for this, folks? If you are a listener to this show, a regular listener, and you have an expertise in something, and you want to possibly become a contributor to the Savage Nation podcast come January 7th, whatever you feel it may be. You're going to have an opportunity by calling 855 Get on the air. We'll talk today, tomorrow, rest of the week. 